my lords, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, great congregation here gathered on this great solemnity of the Assumption of our Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. We are gathered here for this great occasion, the 70th birthday celebration of a man who was born two years before the proclamation of this solemnity. Precisely a day like this, the 15th day of August 1948, in Indoni, Ogwa Egwema, Ndoni local government area of River State. We are gathered here today to celebrate a man who was a senior prefect and a college captain in CKC Onitsha, far back the year 1967. We are gathered here to celebrate a man who was a speaker, Medical Students Association, University of Nigeria, the premier university of Nigeria in 1972 to 1973. We are gathered to celebrate the man who was the founding president of the League of human affiliates in 1972 through 1974 students charity organization we are gathered here to celebrate a, gra a graduate from the University of Nigeria other universities you have to attach the place but this university is the University of Nigeria, far back June 1977, as a medical doctor. We are celebrating a man who has married, who married a justice of the Superlative Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Justice. Mary Peter Odeli, Justice of Supreme Court of Nigeria. We are gathered here to celebrate the man who is so blessed. He is the founder of Pamo Clinics and Hospitals. He holds a distinguished, he is a distinguished medical practitioner far back 1985 from the University of Liverpool, UK. He was the chairman, state chairman, University of Nigeria Alumni Association, River State Chapter from 1985 to 1988. A leader, old River State delegates to the Constituent Assembly 1988 through 1989. We are celebrating a man who was the deputy governor of the old River State, 1992 to 1993. The leader of old River State delegates to the Constitutional Conference in 1994 through 1995, National Secretary, Democratic Party of Nigeria, DPN, 1997 to 1998. We are celebrating a man who was the governor of River State, 1999 to 2007 a man who was the chairman presidential committee on housing and urban development in 2003 a leading pdp 
presidential aspirant for 2007 presidential election. A Knight of St. John's International. The Knight of St. Gregory the Great, a papal knighthood. The Noble Knight of St. John's International, 2005. <laughs> ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, 
destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. This is the word of the Lord. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold.
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Distinguished congregation will rise for the Hallelujah Verse. The song of the gospel that Luke ascribes to Mary is a thanksgiving hymn to the Lord for the wonders he did. He gave fertility to the womb of the virgin and opened all the graves, those of Christ and Mary as well as our own. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in Hest, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? And at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord will be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. 
For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his hand and has scattered the proud in their concert. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. Evangelium Domini
our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Words of our mother taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 46. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your Excellency, yes, I'm the one week governor of River State, and your dear wife, Her Excellency, Honorable Justice Suzette Eberechi Mwike, the celebrant, His Excellency, Sir Dr. Peter Odili, and our beloved mother, Her Excellency, Honorable Justice Mary Odili, in order not to make a mess of protocol, let me simply say, Your Excellencies and my dear people of God. Let me begin my reflection this morning with a little clarification. The readings for this 70th birthday Thanksgiving Mass are the readings for the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When the church observes a solemnity, the official text proper to that solemnity supersedes any other consideration of local churches. It is on this note that special thanksgiving scriptural passages that would have been considered more appropriate for this celebration are therefore not given its primal consideration. However, this official text of the church for today's solemnity also have some key relevance and messages for our thanksgiving mass. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, called the Magnificat Anima Mea, is an ebullient song by the Blessed Virgin Mary for what God did and continues to do in the life of the Virgin, for making it possible for her to enter the unfolding history of God's fidelity to Abraham and his seed. Today, the Catholic Church celebrates one of the many glories of Mary, her assumption into heaven, that is, that upon the completion of her earthly sojourn, she was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory and was exalted as, the Lord, as queen of all with the Lord, in order that she might be more completely conformed to her son, the Lord and victor over death. This dogma of the Catholic Church declared by Pope Pius XII in 1950 is predicated on Mary's differential yet courageous yes to the angel's words about the one to be conceived in her by the power of the Holy Spirit after the salutation of the angel declaring her full of grace and that the Lord was indeed with her. She is also the woman who celebrated an utterly unanticipated conception with her cousin Elizabeth, who in her old age also conceived a son, setting out with haste to that Judean hill country and remaining with her cousin for three months before returning home, which we call the visitation. She is the woman that Luke's gospel has Elizabeth introduced with the honorific title, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. A woman about whom Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in celebration, saying, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb and declared her the mother of my Lord. Recall also that she is the woman who prodded her son to manifest himself in the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee, which led to the miracle of the transformation of water into wine, 120 gallons of wine, our modern day equivalent of 605 bottles of vintage wine, exceeding the expectation of the guests in both quality and quantity so that that wedding party can go on 
and the couple be spared of embarrassment. She is the woman who even though Jesus complained about his own sense of timing when he said, my hour has not yet come, that hour came because the mother had made a request. Because she was not upset nor unnerved by the son's response. After all, she knows her son's mood and foibles have embedded, her, embedded him at a great risk and has led him through adolescence. All she told the servants is do whatever he tells you. Through Mary, all of us as Christians have become brothers, Adelphos, and sisters, Adelphi, of Jesus. A new family now constituted by Jesus. A family that goes beyond biology to spirituality. A family with a new genetic makeup. A rich assortment of brothers and sisters, mothers and sisters, who come together to do God's will. So, such that our ethnic identities no longer matter for there is no longer Jew nor Greek no longer slave nor free no longer male nor female for we are all made one in Christ today we remember a woman standing near the cross of her son was entrusted to us by Jesus in that entrustment ceremony to John this is your mother and who sat with the other brothers of Jesus the apostles in the upper room are waiting the Holy Spirit that came upon her also. And she is the woman who pondered all these things in her heart. All the things the Lord was doing with her. Mary therefore became the first disciple of the gospel. The gospel that her son preached through his life, death and resurrection. It is on account of all these that the Catholic Church invokes her as the mother of the Son of God as the mother of the church, the Theotokos, the mother of the son of David, the new Eve by which Christ, the new Adam, redeemed us and made us his own. One who in an eminent way won the crown of righteousness, that crown of life, the crown of glory that is promised to those who follow Christ. That's why our first reading today from Revelation chapter 11 verse 9 notes that a great sign appeared in the heaven a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and her head a crown of twelve stars. This is what the Catholic Church celebrates in the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. On account of this, immediately after Elizabeth's salutation, it is as though Mary's lips were unlocked and she burst into song, celebrating God's new work, God's faithfulness, by singing, My soul, magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior my dear people of God Mary's song of praise is on our lips and on the lips of your excellencies Dr. Peter Odile and Mary our mother and family and the government and people of River State led by barrister Yesam Wike as we gather here to celebrate this Thanksgiving Mass to mark the 70th birthday of our father. In our secular age, it is striking how many Christian politicians we have at all levels of government across our country and globe. But the question is, how sincere is their faith? Is much of it not simply window dressing for the electorate, based on halos, to calm the moral majority, does their faith actually shape their politics? And if so, how? Or does their politics shape their faith? And how have they squared the two? If we attempt to sketch a theopolitical biographies of these men and women who have had the opportunity to shape the world, the country, and the states that they have governed in which we live, what role is their Christian faith playing in this reshaping? Would it be something about which all of us would be delighted, pleased, indifferent, skeptical, or even afraid to talk about? For most, cutting the support of the church is mere cynicism. And many of them speak openly about their Christian faith, and yet their actions in government show an appalling, messy divorce between their Christian faith and their political actions. That is the idea that 
Christianity and politics do not mix. For some others, you have to struggle to gather the evidence from the crumbs under the political table. For Dr. Peter Odili, the cup of evidence runneth over. As one of Nigeria's serious and explicitly religious governors, one for whom religion and politics are seamlessly interwoven, one of the many reasons for our thanksgiving today. It is therefore important to take account of his faith when trying to understand his legacy as a politician. Today we gather to celebrate the 70th birthday of a husband, a loving husband, a beloved father and grandfather, a mentor, a medical doctor, a Knight of St. John's International, a papal commander knight of St. Gregory the Great, one of the few accorded this degree of the knighthood in our country by the Holy See, founder of Pamo Hospital and Clinic, and now Pamo Medical University, former governor of River State from 1999 to 2007, the 13th governor of River State, and the third democratically elected governor. One who, though was governor of River State, played a politics that was fundamentally nationalistic, and he is considered by so many in this country as one of the most prominent political figures of our country. We thank God today that Dr. Odili was born on the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary on the 15th of August, 1948, and is himself specially devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary, a politician who is convinced that political problems have spiritual roots. All his ideas about life, individual responsibility, looking after your neighbor, patriotism, honesty, self-discipline, hard work, law and order, are all anchored on his religious upbringing, which tied together Christian decency and a religious calling to public service. These bequeathed to him the values of thrift, industry, self-reliance, and probity that shaped and inspired his politics, making him a paragon of democratic virtue. Dr. Odili is obviously a devout Catholic, and there is never a whisper of suggestion that his Christianity was put on for office or for the camera. Such devotedness and devoutness has followed him before, in and out of office, and not even his critics can accuse him of spiritual superficiality. Indeed, if anything, his critics are precisely on the reverse, that Dr. Odili takes his spiritual commitments too seriously, too inflexibly, and too absolutely for a political world. Catholicism has not only offered him a, a political philosophy and a social justice agenda, but has also equipped him with standards to which political actions must, in the end, be referred. Therefore, we thank God for the influence of Catholic social teachings on him, an influence that is so striking and so pervasive that it is reflected in his personal persona. Today, we celebrate a man who does not live parallel lives. His private life is consistent with his public life. Today we celebrate a man who believes in the family and honors and adores his wife, our mother, Mary, whom he has supported to the peak of her career, now a justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A proud father of one boy and three beautiful girls and eight grandchildren. Can we give God a clap offering? <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have every reason to thank God as well for Dr. Odili's political life and career. In 1988, he made his first foray into party politics as a member of the Constituent Assembly. He was Chief Medical Officer of PAMO when his political interests began to take center stage. First as Deputy Governor of River State 
1992 for 22 months and in 1999 Dr. Odili threw himself into the race for the Brick House. Dr. Odili's election as the governor of River State in 1999 was to mark a significant shift in River's politics and eventually politics in Nigeria. His rallying cry or mantra was restoration, a recurring theme in scripture, a way of describing his politics in sacralized terms from Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12 which says and I quote and thou shalt be the repairer of the breach restorer of ruined houses his emergence began the vision of a reconciled united and multi-ethnic and prosperous river state one in which Christianity was to play a significant role the night before his inauguration an eventual departure to government house from his personal residence in Birabi Street, he requested for a mass in the family chapel. It was inconceivable for him that anyone would accept leadership over the people, which is an authority delegated from the Almighty God without asking for God's help. Brothers and sisters, this signaled a new voice in Nigerian politics, saturated in Christian faith, and he was not afraid to use it and it would not be an exaggeration to say that Dr. Odili spiritualized the Nigerian political language. Not only were his speeches God-oriented, but also God was invoked in his speeches, within his speeches, and within big speeches with entreaties to God for divine favor. Dr. Odili offers a fascinating, broad, and deep case study in modern Nigerian history of the combination of Christianity and politics. As Eliza Fulby wrote in the book titled God and Mrs. Thatcher, and I quote, the religious faith of leaders is not to be underestimated. I repeat, the religious faith of leaders is not to be underestimated. It can drive some to war others to peace, others left, and others right. Dr. Odile is certainly not one of those who uses the church and appearances in church for political opportunism. Today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather to offer thanks to God for his ecclesiastical upbringing at CKC or Nietzsche, which did leave him with the sense that the role of the state in Christian society is to encourage virtue, not to usurp it. Consequently, as governor, he reintroduced moral education into the curriculum for schools and appointed chaplains from all Christian churches to anchor it, before other Catholic and Christian governors in other states copied it. He sponsored the most pilgrimages for Christians and Muslims, to religious sites in the state of Israel, Rome, Portugal, France, Mecca, and Medina. It is on record that he remains the only non-Muslim governor who sponsored more Muslim pilgrims for their Hajj than any other Christian governor in Nigeria. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate a man who did not advocate strict church-state separation. For him, there is a place for faith, for faith-based institutions in public life. That is why he established a formal liaison with faith-based communities in tackling social issues based on his convictions of the power of religious communities to assist government in transforming society. He has great respect for men of God, just like our governor, Yes Wike. And we thank God today for a governor who attended masses and services in churches as governor and did not hide his Christian credentials under his, a secular bushel and is counted among the mighty who look up to the Almighty. Brothers and sisters in Christ, his Catholic upbringing notwithstanding, his love for the body of Christ transcended denominational differences. He is particularly generous to churches 
a generosity that started even before his political career through providing free medical treatment for seminarians, religious, and priests in Palmo Clinic. His support for all churches in River State made it possible for the Anglican Communion in River State under his watch to create four dioceses during his tenure. He was, uh, he was and remains very ecumenical in his support of churches across the nation, so much so that you can mistake him for an ecumenical Christian. This support for Christian churches in the state has been taken to another level by the present governor, Yensam Wike, who is the only governor in our country who has built an impressive ecumenical center for the use of all Christians and a very beautiful <laughs> government house chapel. Your Excellency, thank you so much. In the wake of the Sosoliso plane crash, which killed children from River State returning from Loyola Jesuit in Abuja, Dr. Odili gave a whopping $5 million for the establishment of the Jesuit Memorial College Ad Memoriam in Port Harcourt, the school to which we send our children now. We thank God for a Christian like Dr. Odili, who is a detribalized Nigerian and knows no such vocabulary as hyphenated Nigerians. And by hyphenated Nigerians, I mean when you say I am a Hausa Nigerian, Fulani Nigerian, Igbo Nigerian, Ogoni Nigerian. That does not exist in Dr. Odili's vocabulary. He remains one of the highest donors to the construction of the National Ecumenical Center Abuja, Veritas University Abuja, and even the National Mosque. Recognizing the image and likeness of God in all people, he funded charities at the Home for the Elderly in Pothakot and the Daughters of Charity LMA and other motherless babies' homes in River State. His care for the lowly in society is legendary. And his love for training people who work with him is phenomenal. Everyone who knows Dr. Odili very closely knows the story of Sabbath, one of the boys who live with him. Dr. Odili, when building Palmo Clinic, one day went to Gary's Injunction to look for paid workers. Sabbath was among one of those. And at the end of the work, Sabbath stayed back. And from there, Sabbath became a worker in the hospital, from the hospital down to his home, and he saw this boy from the primary school through the university until Sabbath became a member of the House of Representatives in Nigeria. <laughs> this is what Dr. Odili does. He probably saw the governorship as a pastoral role. So his politics can be defined as gospel in action. But friends in Christ, one of the lowest moments in this man's life was when he was dragged by some of his erstwhile sons to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, set up by the Rotimi Amechi administration, aimed at damaging his reputation and preventing him from holding further political offices. The way he felt is better expressed in his own recognizable voice in his autobiography, Conscience and History. And I quote, The axiom that you really never know a man until he has power and money came truly alive since my period out of office, May 29, 2007. It has been a most revealing and instructive period of my life. Perhaps one had taken from point of street contact and made members of family, people whom one had employed straight from school, people who one had no sanguine relationship with, but made beneficiaries of one's generosity in the midst of want, people who professed absolute loyalty and readiness to sacrifice anything in one's defense, people who proclaimed that their own children could not do 10% of what Dr. Odili did in their lives. The list is inexhaustible. All these on my exit from office instantly turned their back on me. 
denied being beneficiaries and indeed joined detractors and political opponents to castigate, denigrate, malign, and condemn me. Like the scripture says, many are the tribulations of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them, delivers them from them all. Despite these betrayers, we are grateful to God that some remain loyal sons, particularly our governor, Yesom Ezewan Winke, and countless others in this state and in our country. Your Excellency, having somebody like Yesom Winke as one of your loyal sons is like having a multitude behind you. For For, for one with him is not just a majority, but in this man, God has put ten men in one man. <laughs> we thank God for Dr. Odili's commitment to reconciliation and his magnanimity towards enemies, which is almost Christ-like, and from which he continues to draw divine strength. Today, we thank God for a man like Dr. Odili, who is unwilling to write off an opponent, even a persecutor, as finally an enemy. Here is a man who believes that silence is very golden, and when you must reply to accusations, do so in writing with facts and precision that will confound the foe. His autobiography, Conscience and History, remains the biggest selling political memoir in Nigeria's history. His release, to paraphrase Winston Churchill, was not the end, nor even the beginning of the end, but perhaps the end of the beginning. Today we thank God for Dr. Odili's Christian faith that is sincere, deep-rooted, and straightforward. Always a prop to his politics, rarely a challenge, fortifying his personal optimism and his sense of personal and natural destiny. His conception of politics is morality in practice. It is on account of this that as governor of River State, he undertook a spiritual and ethical reinvigoration of River State through the Agency for Restoration, Integrity, Service, and Ethics, ARISE. And he returned 24 schools to the missions, reformed the civil service of the state so that the state can rediscover its soul, its spiritual foundation, its moral horizon and values. He advocated a Christianization of the civil service and led all of them along this pathway. All the more reason why he was equally very interested in the moral life of his political appointees. And in this way, the words of Randall Balma in his history of presidential faith, God in the White House holds true. And I quote, Perhaps it is inevitable that since government has no religious establishment, we look to the president, and I add, to the governor, as a kind of moral figure, a kind of moral figurehead, the sum total of our projections about the supposed goodness and honor and moral superiority of America and I add of Nigeria. We expect the president, the governor, to be the vicarious embodiment of the myths we have constructed about the United States of America and there I put Nigeria. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on the concrete road of politics, we thank God that under Dr. Odili's watch, the economy of River State boomed. International airlines flew into Port Harcourt. Embassies established consular services in Port Harcourt. Oil companies moved their headquarters from Lagos to Port Harcourt. People relocated from Lagos to Port Harcourt. Today we remember a man who conceived and built the impressive government house, the phenomenal House of Assembly complex, the ultra-modern judiciary complex, among other state mon monuments. We remember a man whose ambition was to industrialize River State 
and so embarked on Nigeria's first independent power project at Omok, Transamadi, and LMA, generating power even beyond the power needs of River State, but met the refusal of the federal government to honor earlier agreements to amend the Constitution to allow states distribute the power they have generated during the unbundling of NEPA to PHED. In consequence, the power generated from River State is transferred to the national grid and shared just like our oil revenue amongst all in this country, with River State giving an infinitesimal percentage of what she generates. Educationally, we thank God for Dr. Odili's robust support for education at all levels in the state. And it is good for us to know and put on record that Dr. Odili was the one who approved on, in a memo dated the 28th of April 2006 the construction of the new model primary schools that we have in the state. And 10 of them were completed as he was exiting office, which Sir Omeya here commissioned at Oromenike and even Ubima. It is important for us to know this because I worked on that project with him as his appointee as the first chairman of the River State Universal Basic Education Board. Dr. Dilley's administration witnessed the expansion of Port Harcourt and River State, especially in opening new areas around Abuluma, Peter Dilley Road, Ada George, as well as the Air Force Base areas. Working from his principle of responsibility, Odili allowed a politically engaged civil society with various civic and advocacy groups and organizations making their voices heard in the public square. He warned repeatedly about possible escalation of violence in the Niger Delta if the structural injustices in the Nigerian polity that affects the region were not dealt with. He connected most of the difficult areas of the state with a network of roads and bridges, championed women's rights, helping them to grow to their full or to grow to their full potential in order to impact the world around them. He was the first to implement the national increment in salaries and consistently, consistently advocated for the care of the environment and was a strong supporter of human and minority rights. He began the process of making the oil companies clean up their mess here in the Niger Delta according to the operational principle, polluters pay principle, so that the exploitation of natural resources without regard for the environment would end. A cry which to this day has remained unheeded in the wilderness of bureaucracy, technicalities, and purely economic and financial concerns. No issue was of greater concern and importance to him than the dignity and the sanctity of the human life, the reason behind his free medical care for the aged and the young, the most vulnerable sector of our population. And this was complemented with the construction of an ultra-modern BMH hospital equipped with all modern medical facilities. His government encouraged people and communities to help themselves and one another through vigorous promotion of skills acquisition programs in every nook and cranny of the state driven by Her Excellency. In line with our Lord's exhortation, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, help the stranger, the widow, and the fatherless. This cannot be gainsaid. We praise and thank God for a man whose oratory public speeches were off the cuff from unprepared texts interspersed with biblical quotes which became a distinctive feature of his political career. The ensemble of all this plus more made him the golden governor of Nigeria as well as other international awards and chieftaincy titles which he bagged. His dogged political battle along with other governors from the South-South region brought about the abolition of the offshore, onshore dichotomy and the implementation of the 13% deriv derivation which has brought about 
a concomitant and unprecedented rise in the revenue profile of River State, in which has provided successive administrations sufficient financial relief in administering the state. Today, River State is on the lips of most people in Nigeria. Even though there is a, a drastic fall in, in the revenue of the state on account of global decrease in oil prices, one cannot but acknowledge and thank God for a governor like Yes Samuike, the contours and the skylines of Port Harcourt and River State has changed dramatically. The world-class pleasure park, the network of roads, bridges, and flyovers, which has led to a sudden disappearance of traffic from Port Harcourt and Obiwakpo, the dualization of roads to Eche and Ogoni land, what about monumental structures such as the Secretariat for our traditional rulers that honors the traditional institution? The primary education board building named after P.G. Womet. The medical doctor's quarters named after Dr. Denny Fiberesima. The impressive Rex Jim Lawson complex that I saw for the first time last night. All of these named after notable statesmen of River State who fought for the creation of this state. Other structures, such as the Mbo Shemiri Primary Healthcare and the impressive College of Medicine building, are part of the wonders of our governor, for which we should give him a round of applause. <clears throat> Your Excellency, on a personal note, I want to thank you for completing the complementary uh, structure in the UBE board which I started when I was Dr. Odili's appointee. I am particularly so happy, Your Excellency. For this one, I am applauding. <laughs> you are thereby unmistakably Mr. Projects and the pride of River State. <laughs> Finally, my brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate a man, Dr. Odili, who changed the political landscape of our state by creating a new story about Rivers' identity, appointed a young crop of politicians that now constitute the political class of our state. His unique resource control hat, which became the key marker that identified the Rivers' man during his tenure. Today we honor a man who believes in providence, providence, such that any time my discussions with him toss the line of the path that was not taken in 2007, he would say, God has a plan for everything and everyone, and that what we see as the seeming random twist of faith are all part of God's plan. As I stated, in my preface to his autobiography, Nigeria in 2007 needed a capable and a trustworthy replacement to President Obasanjo, and the bell told for a courageous, selfless, far-sighted, and dedicated leadership. It was the golden moment to seize the occasion and be counted for the long-suffering people of the Niger Delta, and Dr. Odili did not lose that opportunity. He rode the crest of public opinion to possible victory in the PDP primaries after the most robust and purposeful presidential campaigns in Nigeria. He stepped out with his best foot, God willing, and was supposed to be leading the charge in the victory procession for the total emancipation of all Nigerians. But betrayers, false accusations, deniers, abandonment, and calculated political maneuverings all combined to give that evil uh, its seeming efficacy. Both critics and admirers will affirm that Dr. Odili played a crucial but yet insufficiently acknowledged role in the momentous zoning of the presidency to the South-South, which resulted in the immediate past administration. The state of Nigeria today reveals the consequences of that road that was not taken in 2007. 
the present circumstances in Nigeria leaves me ruminating on the words of an 8th century Irish poem by Donald O'Gay, which reads, You have taken the East from me. You have taken the West from me. You have taken the moon. You have taken the sun from me. And my fear is great that you are trying to take my God from me. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, according to Angela Merkel, our country, Nigeria, suffers not from too much Islam, but too little practice of Christianity. And that therefore means that you and I, who are Christians, it is only through our confident reclaiming of our Judeo-Christian tradition that we will, be able, we will be able to bring cohesion to our society. If the rest of the politicians who profess some kind of Christian faith would only live up to their Christian values and calling, so much can be achieved in this country. Just imagine the countless number of people on our sides, on the sides of our streets and roads. Just imagine the sick ones being wheeled around in wheelbarrows and countless others in orphanages, private orphanages and reputable faith-based orphanages. If only our governments will recognize that government can collaborate with these institutions for the care of the downtrodden. In the King's Village, Oasis of Love, Orphanage at Iriebe, in the Compassion Home, in the Child, in the Home for Teenage Pregnant Girls and TB Leprosy, all of this run by the Daughters of Charity and many more, the Home for the Elderly. You and I must always remember that the price of secular freedom is eternal vigilance, usually of religious people. As we celebrate this icon, may we never forget the values he exemplifies, bringing his faith to bear on his politics. A righteous man who now bequeaths to posterity the Pumes University, Medical University. Your Excellency, may God bless you, our Father. Enjoy your 70th birthday on earth, and may the years ahead be happy, fruitful, and prosperous while you cherish the memories of the past and look forward to what the future holds for you. May God cause your morning, cause your evening to be better than your morning. Happy birthday, Daddy.
Thank you so much, African Voices. Monsignor, thank you. Uh, we are getting hungry. <laughs> to God be the glory, great is he. Please be seated for a minute. Your Excellency, your dear wife, other Excellencies, your Lordships, our Reverend Fathers, Reverend Monsignor, my dear brothers and sisters, to God be the glory. What else can one say? Everything that has been said, only God could have made them possible. So we give him glory. Having thanked God, having thanked God for his mercy for 70 years and everything that has happened within this period. 
that are human beings, angels of God on earth, that we are part of the process. None of the things achieved could have been attributed to Peter Dili as a human being alone, one head. So let me thank first our dear governor, His Excellency, the tireless, the indefatigable. I used to think I had command of language, but I find it difficult to aptly describe this governor. I have been governors. I have worked under governors. I have also seen governors after me. This man is unique. If we, we are not constrained by time, because this mass was supposed to have ended at 12 o'clock. And as a doctor, I know that if you delay food beyond a certain number of hours between the first meal, your next meal may be with the doctor. <laughs> so I will not take you through a litany of what this governor has done. But just to tell you that of all the people that we have worked politically with from way back in the 80s, nobody in the political terrain can compete with this governor for what he has done. And so I want to use this opportunity to thank him for packaging and imposing the celebration of this birthday on all of us. He decided he decided against the decision of me and my wife and children to have a low kid quiet family celebration. He cancelled it and decreed that two days will be shut down in River State because of this celebration. And every arrangement that has been made has been cheered, decided, sanctioned, executed by him as chairman of the committee for the celebration of this birthday. The Excellency, only God will reward you. Let me use this opportunity to request our people, all reverse men and women, our chiefs, the entire political class, everybody that is proud to be identified and called a reverse man or woman, give your total support to this government. And I'm not saying it from a political position. I'm talking from the position of an elder statesman. Because with his leadership, we can achieve total cohesion and unity of our people. And once that is achieved, the sky is the takeoff point for the new river state that is leading. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to thank all of you who have come to join us to thank God today. People from outside the state, my former teachers, my former colleagues. Where do I start? My former co-politicians and co-workers. Some of my commissioners I haven't seen for years. You brought them here. Governor, thank you very much. But don't let the governor make you keep away for another 10 years. You must begin to touch base with whom? There is no place like home. No matter what you see outside, home is the best. Hold firm to it. Your Excellency, once again I want to thank you and urge you to continue 
to do what you're doing. Elders say, when a child is doing well, let him continue with the good works. My dear reverends, I want to thank you. Monsignor and our priests, I don't know how the bishop allowed you to break away from your retreat to be here. May God replenish what you lost in the retreat by being here. My dear brother knights and sisters, may God bless you all. My friends who have come from outside the state, God will lead you back safely. Your lordships, your lordships of the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, Federal and State Courts, all of you, may God bless you. You are doing a special job. You represent God in the human society because God is a God of justice and you, justices, you are the key that will sustain the unity of Nigeria, that will sustain a peaceful Nigeria. May God give you the courage and the strength to do it. I thank all of you and may God bless you. And as he cuts the cake, please require the happy birthday song. Students of Pumes, come and present your gift. Draw close to present your gift. There is no time to waste.
And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, for this Mass is ended.